Hey, it's Brett with RecordingCrave.com. Thank you so much for watching today. I always appreciate it. In this video, we're going to talk about mixing horns again. One of my other videos I have on YouTube, I have a video on mixing horns. It's probably one of my most watched videos. And in this video here, Mixing Horns 2, we're going to go over the same band at the same live event that they did, uh, an outdoor live event. And we're going to start from scratch. Nothing's on any of the instruments at all. And we're going to go through the mix and uh, we're going to focus on the horns for this video. So without further ado, let's jump into this and check it out. Let's give it a quick listen and to hear what we're working with. You'll probably recognize the song. Okay, so you probably recognize that Chicago song. Does anyone know what time it is, is the name of the tune. So let's give it, um, let's isolate the horns here. You can see I have a rough mix set up with nothing on the tracks at all whatsoever. So let's begin. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the trumpet. And before I do that, I just want to cover again. When I, when I do approach horns, I generally think of a choir in different parts and then blending those parts. Not all that different from even doing like background vocals at times. And then obviously sometimes there's a lead vocal or a lead horn. And in this case, the trumpet takes a lot of leads. Here we are, so let's jump into this and we'll focus on the trumpet right now. You know, it sounds pretty good the way it is, but let's add a little character to it. I'm going to use, you know, the last video I used just Pro Tools, Avid's, uh, their parametric EQ. And this time around, I'm going to use a Plugin Alliance EQ, and I'm going to use the Lindell 80 channel here. So this is kind of a character plugin, has some good tone to it. And the, basically, this is the default setting. We'll listen to it on here here there's a compressor right here but we'll shut it off right now and then I will copy and paste this over to all the instruments so they should all be bypassed in the compressor mode okay and I'm gonna actually make sure the gate is turned off okay so let's listen to this and what I think I'm hearing already in fact let's turn them all on the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably pan this time the last video I did not pan the trumpet or the uh, trombone or the sax. This time I'm gonna run the trumpet straight up the middle and then maybe try panning the sax and trombone opposite directions. Okay, it spreads it a little bit. I'm a little concerned it might take some of the fullness away a little bit. Let me try panning them both to one side, leave the trumpet up the middle and see what that sounds like. It seems more glued together when I have the horns together over there just slightly off to to the right or about two o'clock let me run it back the other way this is part of mixing you're trying to figure out actually let's listen to the context with the other instruments that might help
start here. I think I'll make an I might change my mind as the mix progresses and as verb is added and uh, maybe a little compression I might change this. I don't know yet, but we're going to start right here. So the first thing I want to do is maybe add a little tone to the trumpet just to get it to pop a little more. on the 12 kale up just a little bit. I'm going to add some 220. Add about... Yeah, I'll just add a couple, or actually 4 dB there. Um, one thing I've learned from watching uh, a few Chris Lord Algae videos is he will overshoot something, whether it's on the fader or an EQ. He'll overshoot it, then bring it back. And I kind of just did that uh, unwittingly, actually, just wanted to hear what it was doing. But I've seen him do that several times, and I do like that because then you really hear it exaggerated, and then you can pull it back. Just pops a little bit, not a lot. In fact, let's just make sure our... Yeah, we didn't have to do a lot there. Basically, we got a small smiley face going on because we boosted 220 and we boosted 12K. Now, these may change as we start working on the rest of the mix. And generally, I don't start with the horns. I, I usually work from the bottom up, meaning I start with the drums, bass, and then the keyboards or guitars, and, and then horns and stuff like that. And then vocals I usually do last. But we'll start with this. We This may change. So... I'm not going to do anything with the compression right here just yet. So let's listen to this saxophone. too much uh, at this uh, 700 hertz here uh, it gets a little honky but if I add just a little bit it gives it a little more breadth and depth so Yeah, it gives it a little body to the sound there. I like that. So let's go over to the trombone. Uh, 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 uh. 
going to bypass the EQs right now. So let's listen to it in the context of the band. That changed quite a bit, so when you bring in the other instruments and stuff, it uh, takes some of the brightness away. And I have a feeling once the mix starts to evolve that uh, this may change a little bit too. So let's go hit save on that, and then let's go add a little reverb. We'll add the LX480 from Relab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and pull the mix all the way down. We'll blend that in. We'll, we'll leave this about right there. And I have these set at around 10 on every one of them. So I'm going to blend in this and then as they're playing, and we'll see what this sounds like. <laughs> Size at 37. Too tight. Is pretty good. That's set at like set at uh, 2.8. And once the other the instruments are EQ'd and there's other reverbs going on, this reverb will get sucked up pretty fast. In fact, we might have to increase it. But for now, I think we're going to start with that. <laughs> put a little compression on the horns here. This is the the horn bus or the horn aux, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use an SSL compressor. Come down here and we we'll use the SSL bus compressor. taking about one db off there um, i'm going to just turn on the default compressor on the in individual channels see if we can just hit that just a little bit Okay, that actually doesn't sound bad at all. Let's turn it up. Just 
that's just completely static on everything static mix wise and i'm going to bypass all the processing we have done and to do that on in pro tools is you select the channels you want there and then push shift then a and that will bypass all your inserts there so i'm going to leave it that way and then i'm going to turn it on <laughs> I think we're going to start here and again this will change I believe once the other instruments are EQ'd and there's more compression on other instruments like the drums and the bass and the vocals we're going to hear some of the once the especially when the vocals and the guitar come in and the processing is done on that we're going to hear probably a little bit of a loss of the verb and also maybe even some of the top end off the horns not 100% sure on that, but I think that's what will happen. Thank you so much for watching this Mixing Horns video number two that I've done. And we're going to continue on with this mix. And this is all from the ground up, so I'm probably going to do some things that I did different from the last video on Mixing Horns to this one. But I think the, the end result will probably be close to the same. But who knows? We'll have, to, we'll have to see. So please watch the next video on mixing the drums and the bass, and then we'll have a couple more videos after that doing the complete mix so thank you so much i would love it if you would subscribe hey and we'll see you in the next video